Hi guys, this is Nutrix the Synth Guy and today we're talking about Pure Synth from Gospel Musician. Now it's a rumpler. Let's just take a moment to explain what a rumpler is. Rumpler is basically a sample playback synthesizer. So it's a digital synthesizer. In this case, it's an app. Of course, an app is digital. But if you th think about a hardware synthesizer that runs digital sounds, it's also an app. But it's a it's a software made by, let's say, Roland that runs on a Roland hardware and only does one thing, being a synthesizer. But it's a digital synthesizer. Now, the Rumpler concept is basically edit plays back sample that are burned into ROM memory, read-only memory. You cannot change the recorded sound that are part of the samples that you can use to play your sounds. Now, the sounds that you play in a rumpler, um, they basically are the oscillators. The rest of the synthesis is, the you know, up to a point, depending on the option in that synthesizer, the rest of the synthesis is synthesis you know filter envelope lfos stuff that we all expect to have of course all of company has their own twist about it but basically it's the rest of it is synthesis so what makes a rumpler a rumpler is the fact that the company that gives you this digital synthesizer did the job for you so they did record a piano sound but not once many times over and in and, and the worst case and in, in the most excessive case they recorded all the notes at least i don't know 20 different times at different level of playback and they have layers so they switch between layers so imagine the job for doing that first of all you need to record all these sounds separately and you need to program them clean them up optimize the volume so they sound when you play them to the right volume so they sound like they're part of the same instrument so it's a big job especially if you do stuff that needs to sound acoustic, like a real piano, a real violin, a real orchestra. These will be difficult. That's not impossible, but it's more difficult to do because it has to be very well done. So most people say, I want to buy a bank. So that's why we have these rumplers. Now, this thing is a rumpler. Pure synth is a rumpler, but also it does other type of synthesis, but mostly by default, it is a sample playback. So there's a list of sound that comes with it. There's a good enough size of a sample bank that comes with it. And the rest of synthesis is mostly, you know, what we expect out of a synth. Uh, so I'll go through it and I'll explain the different features of how it works. And um, you'll see, it's it's actually pretty, pretty fun if that's the type of sound you're looking for. Um, so let's actually go in and test the sound and go through a guided tour of the features. What you have in this window, you have the control window, okay, on the top, you see control, you've got IFX, with in, um, insert effects, and you have reverb effects and master effects. So I'm going to go through the effects right away because it's easy to manage and you'll see that these are just like the different windows. You click on it and you select the type of effect you want. So you can say, I want to have distortion on this one. Okay, distortion. Then you got values for it and you have another one i don't know i don't want i want to have vintage spring reverb and i want to have uh, a uh, compressor whatever it is you just put it there and then you stack up to five of them so that's the insert so it means this will be on i'm going to turn them off for now this will be on uh the instruments that you're playing you also have reverb so these are dedicated to reverb only uh, well, reverb and uh, chorus and phasing, and that's it. So these are kind of what you have in this, and all of these are this only. And you've got the master. Uh, master, you would have EQs and compressor and master limiter. So these are just like three banks of effects. They're positioned at different places. The master is on the master out. The insert is on the instrument, and the reverb is kind of a send. Because if you want to control how, where they're going to fit, you have this little window here where you have the mixer of the four different uh, layers playing. And you can say, well, my first one is sent to the insert effect, not to the reverb. My second one is only sent to the reverb. My third one is sent to a little bit of the two. And the last one is sent to nothing. So you only have the dry sound. So it's, it's, you can have different effects affecting the, but the whole thing will go through the master effect. Okay, so that's just for the effect part. Let's let's forget about the effects right now. I want to hear the raw sound. I want to hear what this thing can do. 
So the first section is the one where you have the sign written here. So the sign is basically, click on it and you get the list of the oscillator types. What you have is a VA waveform, so VA for virtual analog, and you can click on the different category of, let's say, sawtooth, and then the two type of shape you can have. Same thing with rectangular, you can say square, pulse, and mod square. And others are just different ways of doing virtual analog. So this is a real-time calculation of what a virtual, you know, oscillator would do. So this is what you would find in the JP8000 and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the circuit kind of thing. So all of these virtual analog calculation, that's what you have here. So that's for the waveform here. So you also have wavetables. So wavetable is a wavetable. It's a type of synthesis itself. So they recorded a sound in slices and basically you can move through the slices. So these, let's see. I'm going to turn off the uh, projector here. So they decided to record different sound and you can Okay, so you've got a list, again, a huge list of raw source to play with. So this is kind of, in a way, it is a sample, but then it's sliced into um, tables of time and then you can move through them. Um, the other rest of it is basically samples. You know, keyboard, you would have acoustic pianos and then there's a list. sound nice. Okay, so these are the, again, what I'm doing right now, I'm not loading the whole thing. I'm just changing the oscillator. So there's a huge list here. So the piano, grand, electric grand, suitcase. So these are more of the uh, electri electric pianos. You have the stage, a world observer, electric piano, tines and FM, you have the DX. So they've got plenty and plenty of source to play with. You got organ, guitar, bass, strings and pads, uh, and sample just for the fun of it. Let's actually go and see. You have orchestral, ensemble. Okay, so you've got nice. You get brass, vox, vox it becomes really funny. Oh, they're actually fun. More orchestral type of things. And more electronic kind of sound also. It sounds like in the 90s to me. <laughs> And then you get the digital voices, so it's not, it doesn't sound like somebody talking, but it sounds like kind of a digital sound that let's try to recreate choirs. That's come from the Mellotron. Um, then you've got analog waveforms that they, they recorded, you know. There's a bunch of them, saw, pulse, square. Uh, so there's a lot of different ones. I mean, the, the list is just very, very impressive. And you've got the woodwinds and you've got the percussions, uh, tuned and timpani and hits. So these are not like drum sounds. These are just you no know, percussion sounds. That goes mostly orchestral sounds um, or acoustic sounds. So this, this is just the raw sound to play with. This is the oscillator that can be virtual analog, that can be wavetable, can be sample based, um, and that can be sample of analog waveform also. So pretty, pretty nice to start with. Now, in this section, you've got volume, gain, pan, semitone, scent, 
you know, stuff you expect. You've got the voices, how many voices you want it to be able to play. Is it monophonic, polyphonic? You want them to be detuned? Do you want them to be spread? Uh, so they sound like, well, not, not, let's not take that one. Let's take uh, Sawtooth, uh, Saw. Okay, a classic raw sound. Okay, let's actually get out of this window and go add some. You hear them detune. Here, okay, and the spread. They're together in mono, and they're spread across spectrum of left and right. You bring down the voices to one. Goes back to being monophonic one sound. So it gives you this 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 power here. Now the one thing is important right away on the side of it. You have one two three four, and we get octave one two three four. This thing plays back four of this at the same time. So four different sources of sound, let's say oscillator, all of them, each of them separately have their own control of envelope for the amplitude. And they also have their own control for the filter, own control for how it's gonna to respond to pitch band and the way it's gonna play. Everything, every time you see one, two, three, four, it means that you have a separate control for each of the, the four layers. Where you don't have one like the mod wheel and the other four at the bottom here means that this information is for the four of them at the same time. So that's how you see it. And what's cool about it is, let's say I have saw on the first one. So I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna say, second one is gonna be bass, electric, yeah, fretless, whatever it is, I don't really care. If you go back on amp, if you go down on amp section and press on two, it will show you the name of the sound I'm playing. So I'm actually changing the envelope of fretless two, whereas in the filter, I'm playing with the saw because I'm on one and I see the name of the sample. So you have attack, hold, decay, sustain, release. So there's a hold that is hold that is a little different. Here you've got the control for the keyboard. Um, as you play along the keys, you want the attack and decay to be shorter or longer. And this is how it's gonna respond to this. The amount of the envelope, uh, the uh, you can change the shape of the velocity. How it's going to respond to velocity? Okay, so interesting and in how you want to control it. All of this can be basically adapted to the way you play. The mod wheel, you have uh, shape of the modulation that the mod wheel will send. So basically, the mod wheel is one LFO if you want. You can send it to uh, the pitch filter for all of them are just one of the filter one two three or four and the LFO or you can control how much you know the, the LFO speed so you get the depth here uh, and you have the rate and so basically it's a LFO but um, activated when you turn the, the, the um, modulation wheel on okay under that you've got the filter the type of filter you have here is chosen at the bottom of that little uh, block here you have to turn it on and then you have a low pass high pass bend pass bend pass unit shelving notch um, all what is all is there an help somewhere here if i'm go here oh no more is there help, help. oh no tell me how this works is there help mm, settings user manual there you go so any good company will have a some type of manual somewhere to know more about it they just tell you that filter type in terms of filter type. Yeah, but which one? What the filter all? What does it mean? They don't tell us. So I'm curious. If you know what the filter all stands for, I'm curious. There's a peak and there's all. I don't know. I hear something, but I'm not sure what it does. So let's say turn it off for now. So you get your filter, you get the resonance, amplitude, everything you expect from a filter is there. You get the LFO at the bottom here. Again, you click on it, can change the shape you want. You can have it sync or not. You can change the speed. It can be bipolar, retriggering if you want it to retrigger every time you play the key. And you get, what's cool about this, there's a speed and beside it, there's two destination points. You click here and say, well, I want it to be sent to the pitch or I want it to be sent to the pulse modulation width, and this is how much, and I want also to be sent to uh, the cutoff point and the pulse modulation, here we go. And then it's gonna be assigned to that. 
pretty nice simple yet you know very efficient what we expect control section again you get four of them so each one can be controlled separately for the four layers you get the, the way the notes will be played is it polyphony monophonic and different ways here there's also release what's cool about release it's going to be only being triggered when you release the key so you can have a sound that plays when you press when you release it's going to trigger the other one so it, it would say that that layer will only play when you release the key so you can have like two sounds one when you play when you release it triggers another sound so pretty um powerful in the way you want to use it color is a little bit of an eq and mod is how much is going to change depending on when you play is going to be some randomize with the velocity um, and then there's random that's kind of a bizarre one it can change i'm playing so it's not always playing so it's random and delay gives a time before the sound plays back you go why would i use a delay well think of this as these four layers are one sound so you might have a sound starting right away the attack of the sound then you want another sound to appear later on in the sound so you might want to delay the second layer so it appears after the attack of the first sound has been created so this has to be think um, and how you want to use it as a layer of four different sounds and they together create your instrument you're playing so that's how you look at this now let's play some sound so you hear what comes with it um, if i click on the top here i'm going to see factory presets initialize sound let's say acoustic piano whoa acoustic piano so you saw the time it took to to load because it loads samples Okay, so you get, you know, again, there's a lot of sounds. And the list is just like huge again. Let's go back just for fun on effects. You see, in this case, there's a flanger, reverb, you got these, master, you get this. And if you go into the mixer, you see how they're being sent. Um, all of them are being sent to. if you want to and you get the volume of each of them separately so now if you want to control this a little bit more you go into wrench you have here and you can learn control change and assign them to different section here um, you can clear these control you can have audio control here the sample rate and uh, uh, the audio you're going to use there's uh, 
source. In this case, I'm using the nano key as a source for MIDI. You can choose the channel and you can actually download. So what's cool about this is how much stuff you get out of it. So I have the full thing. There's a 2.5 gig. So that might be the only thing is that when you're using a rumpler, you're using sample, it takes some space. And what you have here is 2.5 gig of space for additional sounds and two, uh, uh, 3.2 gig of the factory content. So this takes some space. That's, that's a big chunk. Uh, unless you have not the space for it, it's not good. But if the type of sound you have here, mostly a lot of what you would have, I would say, I would call them the 90s uh, bread and butter synthesizers, the JV 2080 and the JV uh, series. And uh, today would be the Motif and the Phantom and uh, Korg also had there. So basically the, the, the one that plays all the type of sounds. If you want a general synth that can play, you know, piano, bass, uh, violin, or you know, most of the stuff you hear usually today, but, and of course some electronic sounding also, it is, you know, the go-to synth. Uh, it does all of that. It's not for drums. Uh, it doesn't have like kick snare and, and a drum kit, but it's mostly for, you know, uh, which one to play now this is also a u format compatible so what's cool about it is if let's you you open it in your favorite daw then you use this you can have many of them at the same time because you load one plugin for each track then you can have a bass piano violin uh, choir there's multiple version of this app running as a plugin and all of them can have a different sound so Pretty powerful, pretty nice. Uh, again, the only drawback, but that's the drawback for anything that is based with sample, is the size of the sample bank, basically. Uh, some would say, well, I would love to have my own sample. I don't think that's the type of instrument for that. This is really, you take the sound that are there, you modify them because you've got enough control, and um, you basically play sounds that sounds almost acoustic. So that's the goal. Well, that's it, guys. I'm curious if, do you know this synth? And if you have used it, if you did, can you just link some songs you made using it? Because I want people to hear this thing in, in an environment where you have the whole song playing with that. So pure synth from a gospel musician, pretty nice, pretty nice. See you soon guys, cheers.